when it comes to things like genetic modification, it can sound a very, very scary word. And unfortunately, the anti GMO movement has for years, years capitalized on using these scary words like Ooh, ge genetic modification, even though that's the, the full term. Uh, Frankenfoods, uh, they've you know styled oh, my hair's an absolute mess. There we go, <laughs> this morning's realized, um, but yeah, uh, so they've, they've absolutely you know stoked the fear uh, uh, about this about you know gm foods for years and even the very phrase or doing anything you know genetically modifying for years but we have seen over time that things like you know genetic modification has worked it is basically a tool like a you know view it as a school screwdriver for scientists to essentially use uh for the benefit of, of of people, be it not only just in the areas of food, but we've seen it in you know pharmaceuticals and all different types of, of areas. But of course, when it comes to food, that's where sort of the protesters start to freak out, mostly because it's the organic lobby, who, well, if you've ever seen anything recently from uh, Miles Power, he's a scientist on YouTube. He did an absolutely fantastic thing recently about what's been going on in India. Um, and about how the organic food movement is basically absolutely insane. And in places like Sri Lanka, no, was it Sri Lanka or is it Ceylon? I, I, I can't remember now. Um, they showed a thing how basically the the movement, the, the organic movement forced farmers and the government to sort of ban sort of pesticides and, and fertilizers and go like fully organic. And it caused a famine. <laughs> uh, they have no idea at all when it comes to to modern farming, let alone when it comes into the areas of uh, you know of, of GM and sort of the realm of science. But there is something that I, I, I sort of do agree: there should be regulations around this uh, type of thing. You know, I, I, I do agree there should be be some you know form of regulations to to make sure you know that we know what's going on. You know, it helps prevent accidents. You know whole reason why you have regulations in the first place so i am again pro gm but i am absolutely again as we said for uh things like you know regulations happen unfortunately we are seeing our government try to push through a bill about doing just that getting rid of the regulations in and around uh genetic modification especially when it comes to the area of food um and it could cause harm and you know and with the best of intentions, you know, as, as we'll get into here, you know, scientists may have indeed the best of intentions when it comes to sort of doing some of these experiments or creating some of these things. But unfortunately, we can maybe potentially see some unintended consequences. Now, I'm not fully on board on what we're going to see here. Um, uh, Lord Robert Winston fully on board with him saying, I think there is a bit of, you know, um, alarmism but i also do agree you know with the urgency that you know hey guys we we should probably not be removing uh these types of of, of regulation you know regulations that we always said do exist for a reason so uh before we go uh cracking on uh into this uh please do remember to hit that like share and subscribe button and of course down below there are links to my patreon page and our station link called buy me coffee waking well buy me coffee and as always thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel and of course down below is the youtube uh, thank you button and of course the pony club as well so do remember to ring the bell as well and let's crack on with this then shall we so this comes from the independent with the title of top geneticist warns the uk is embarking on an experiment that could cause great harm top geneticist oh there we go get rid of that a top geneticist has warned the uk's government plans for looser regulation around precision bred animals and plants is a massive experiment that could cause great harm to the planet Renowned broadcaster and, and fertility expert Lord Winston told Parliament he was very concerned that the use of this technology could have unintended consequences as the bill passed through its report stage in the House of Lords. He said, 
Every single piece of technology that humans have ever produced has a downside that we don't expect and we don't recognize and predict at the time. And I would argue that this is one of those examples of technology that we have a duty as a house in parliament to examine extremely carefully. And if we not, uh, if I'm not sure that we've done that yet, he added, in my view, we are ex embarking on a massive experiment that could have global repercussions. So this is really, um, you know, one of the, you know, the, the, the great arguments about sort of deregulation. It will could have a lot of potential downsides. And this is why I've said, have regulations in this regard. You know, make sure that we minimize any potential damage that we could do. And in a sense, while it is sort of a bit alarmist, I think maybe not global re repercussions, um, but there would be sort of, you know, maybe potentially some repercussions. You, you don't sort of fully know. And this is, again, why I am for some sort of regulations in this area being in place. But of course, this is part of the whole plan to make the UK a science superpower by somehow, instead of encouraging scientists and giving them funding, to instead go, no, nah, I tell you what, we'll just get rid of all the regulations and, and, and somehow uh, scientist paradise. No regulations, scientist paradise. Not going to happen, you know? Uh, it's the same argument you see used for trade or the chemical industry, there will be repercussions when you get rid of these regulations. And sometimes they will be very much unintended uh, consequences. But anyway, he continued to say this. When we start to introduce animals or of a particular lack of diversity or even diversity or even different species or different areas, we have no proper data that we can really analyze to make certain that we are not doing things that are either harmful to the planet or harmful to the environment, harmful to human health and harmful to microorganisms and harmful, perhaps, to promoting virus viruses for that matter. Precision breeding describes a range of technologies, such as gene editing and allows DNA to be edited more precisely than traditional breeding methods. So. There are, as we said before at the beginning, legitimate uses for this. And it does, as we said, a range of technologies. It's not just one thing. So having a ban on this, I, I, I'm I, not for. I think scientists should be allowed to sort of use these technologies and look into them. But I am certainly for regulations here. So that's always really been my argument. Regulations, guys, you know, that's how you sort of present, prevent, uh, you know, disasters from, from happening. So back to it. So it is different to genetic modification in that it changes characteristics of a plant or animal by deleting, swapping, or repeating genes already present in the population of that species rather than introducing new ones. And so could have occurred naturally or even be produced by traditional methods. And this is always the argument that, you know, these organic, you know, farmers don't understand. You know, modern wheat did not exist, uh, you know, 10, you know, like a thousand years ago. It has happened because we have used genetic modification for years to get these types of, of plants, you know. Look at, um, uh, you know, melons is a perfect example, watermelons, bananas, strawberries, all of them have been genetically modified. But for some reason, that doesn't count. It's only when, ooh, you know, that beware that man in the lab coats with that, you know, suspicious syringe, ooh, he's, he's injecting new genes into it. But of course, that's where the scare tactics come from. So back to it. So Lord Winston has highlighted the concerns around the impact of uh, epigenics where the expression of a gene is influenced by its environment and the fact that genes can be influenced by other genes around them, arguing that the research is on very, very far from being absolutely clear. He said, when we start to meddle with things, we don't necessarily find things to be quite what we expected and sometimes very markedly different. 
Again, which is true. That's why scientists experiment. But this is why you have regulations in uh, in this. Genetic technology and the Precision Breeding Bill is set to remove the EU measures preventing the development from marketing or even the precision bred animals. Despite the concerns from peers, the bill has passed its report stage in the House, uh, in the House of Lords, unamended. Lord Winston's uh, caution came as the Deaf Minister, Lord Byron, said that the government plans to com compense this new uh, regulation using a phased-in process where certain species will be introduced first, namely those used in agriculture and aquaculture. He added that the precision bred animals are likely to appear in the UK market until about the next decade. Lord Byron said, I want to make a commitment on the floor in this house that we will adopt a phased-in approach to commencing the measures in this bill in relation to animals. We will commence the measures in this bill for only a select group of animals and species in the first place before com commencing these measures in related other species. For example, in the first phase, it is likely to be animals typically used in agriculture or aquaculture. He added that plant uh, consignment uh, regulations would come forward in 2024, but I do not foresee unless science moves at a particular rapid pace, and that plants will be ready for market in at least four to five years from royal assent. Animals, I suspect, would be at least two to three years after that. Defending the government's actions, he said, for me, it's about looking at crops and what I see uh, frying in heat waves that we've never had when I was younger. It's about talking to farmers who have Belgian blue cattle that can only give birth to calves after a C after by cesarean C-section because they have been bred through traditional breeding methods in ways that makes natural calving impossible. And again, this is why you would use these tools. Um, again, we have seen the previous heat waves, uh, for example, the past couple of years for farmers have been very bad for their crops. Again, the case with the Belgian blues, you know, they can only be born by cesarean section because of, you know, their, their selective breeding. Um, you know, this is why you have, you know, you would use these genetic modification tools and the, you know, these, you know, these tools, this is why you would use them. So, I'm not, as I've said before, I am not against any type of this stuff. I've just said, look, there should be regulations to make sure that, you know, we're doing this safe. But anyway, we'll continue. Anyway, he continues to say, and it's about correcting some of those aberrations that have existed and the opportunity. We can tie ourselves down with all the negatives about this, but the opportunities of this legislation and what it offers for animal welfare and for tackling issues like climate change are immense. And he's right in that regard. Um, we have seen very successful trials of new types of wheat that are resistant to, um, you know, insects, um, good for sort of very drought uh, areas so that, you know, they don't need as much water to grow. We, we've seen these trials carried out and been successful. But the problem is it's you have a equally powerful organic lobby that does everything in its power to to stop and stymie any of that you know stuff coming out so while i am again i think i have very mixed feelings about this bill to be honest while i am for um these types of tools and and stuff like this being absolutely looked into i i do not think getting rid of um you know, getting rid of these regulations and going on this absolutely deregulatory agenda that they are on, again, to create a science superpower, um, I think could have very, very bad negative consequences. Uh, again, I'm not fully with, as you saw, Lord Winston's statements. I think, you know, global consequences, um, not potentially. Uh, but of course, the other thing is, is uh, if we do have these animals, very likely they will not be, you know, be allowed to enter the eu uh, I, I definitely think that'll be the case um but again we'll, we'll have to see and let the scientists do their thing but of course make sure that there are you know, sort of regulations so that we can potentially limit any unforeseen consequences you know that to me is it, it makes sense that's the way i think we should be doing it but anyway back to it 
Uh, the government did see off a Labour frontbench amendment to get the framework for the phased in approach on the face of the bill. The House of Lords voted 206 to uh, online two majority uh, of, of 14 to reject an amendment by the former Labour uh, DEFRA minister, Baroness Heyman of Unlock, who proposed a set of conditions and a time frame. The government later saw off a bid by peers to secure stronger welfare provisions. Uh, gee, I wonder why. Uh, in the provision of breeding and animals. The House of Lords rejected it by 193 votes to 173, majority of 20, and the demand for additional safeguard in the authorization processes. So, pausing for extra protections, Baroness Jones of uh, Whitechurch said, as the bill stands, there is too much left to chance. And I, I, I do sort of agree with that. I, I, I can agree with that statement. Uh, Liberal Democrat Baroness uh, Blackwell of Handen and Manville said that such an interest in this bill and its consequences, which will flow from it, will uh, believe in a uh, in a belt and brace approach is necessary. Uh, again, what I've been arguing for, this is why you have regulations. But responding, Lord Byron said that the existing animal welfare legislation is in place and this bill is intended to work alongside it to enable the responsibility, uh, responsible innovation. He added, I think that you can overdo caution in these circumstances and you can clog up the system. The bill already outlines a regulatory framework to safeguarding animal welfare, which goes beyond the existing requirements in traditional breeding. A Liberal Democrat amendment, uh, also related to animal welfare, was rejected by peers uh, in favour of the government in a majority of 15. So, will this have unintended consequences? Potentially so. Um, and I, I think it's a shame that the government is going this, but then again, this is their... This is their idea. This is their plan. Let's just go on this crazy, wacky, deregulatory agenda and just, you know, hope for the best. And in this area, you know, this is where you can have sometimes some unintended consequences. And particularly when it comes to animal welfare, well, how many EU regulations came from animal welfare? How many of those, bit of those laws under... Jacob Rees Mogg's EU retained law bill could suddenly just go bomb by the end of the year if that bill passes. This is this is again where this gets worrying and why you should have regulation to make sure that you know these procedures are being followed to make sure if there is accidents, unintended consequences, or things like that, that they get reported, that they get known about, and it doesn't get hidden. Of course, as always, um, we'll have to see what happens here. But um, I, I do worry that this is indeed a a great experiment uh, that they are that they are embarking on, and could cause a lot of harm potentially. So, as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. And of course, please uh, remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button on your way out. And of course, as always, guys, links down below. Uh, through all the doobly-doos, and of course, we'll always see you next time.